Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. This is part three of my review of the Festool MFT system, and we're again going to be covering more free field use of the quads dogs that I discussed in part two that I used mostly to align my table, my custom modified table. And also we're going to talk about a new accessory that I hadn't mentioned before, and that's the quads, the rail dogs from quads products. Now what this is, is it's a 20 millimeter diameter cylinder, again machined just as accurately as the quads dogs. There's no lip on these. These will fall right through your table. But they come with a small nipple on the top and then a screw. And what this does is you put it into the bottom of your rail. There's that same track. You slide this screw in, right? And there's, it's loose, it's got play. But when you tighten it up, the nipple centers it dead in the middle of that track and then there's no play. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to talk about how to use these rail dogs and also the quads dogs on how you can do freeform cuts out in the middle of your field without necessarily using the, the, the rail. Again, if you remember, the grid is set up to be that square. So if I wanted to, I could you know, put just two dogs there, take my stock, push it up against there. Because this fence is parallel to these dog holes, this is parallel to that. doesn't really buy you much, but there's that might have some, some use for you. But more what you can do is if I wanted to, I can start using the layout of these holes in a rise run fashion. So here, I can go one over and one up, or down, whichever direction you want to look at it. And now I've got a rise run of one to one, which is 45 degrees. I can easily push my stock up against that till it, lock, till it butts up against it. And now, if I use the guide rail, this is going to be a 45 degree cut. But of course, the rise runs, you could continue on to go over two and up one, or you could go over two and go up three, whichever. There's so many rise run numbers that are used in woodworking and especially in, in house construction that this grid pattern alone, just for that, will buy you a lot of simple cuts without ever having to take out a miter gauge or having to set an angle with the transfer bevel. Now, in my case, if I am doing anything with an angle, I don't actually use the miter gauge. That was the reason why I it was easy for me to convince myself to remove the miter gauge from my table is if you look at the miter gauge that was on the original 1080 and it's better in the MFT3 but it's fairly coarse settings right I mean if you're off by a half a degree it's gonna make a difference on on a fairly large cut so for me I would much rather use a transfer bevel to set my angles and just lay a guide rail down for me I would much rather use a transfer bevel for setting the guide rail angles because I'll measure this directly off my product and then move it to the cut. What a lot of people talk about when they ask about the Festool system is can we live without a track, uh, table saw? I've seen this question posted many, many times onto a forum. So what I want to do is I want to show you how you can actually use it to cut sheet goods in a way that you don't need a table saw. And you can have the same repeatability, the same accuracy or more, and only a little bit, uh, maybe not quite as fast as a table saw, but there's so many other benefits that uh, it's, it's up to you to decide. So. We talked about some of the angled miter cuts. Of course, there's a very large cross-cut capacity using the table. But if you wanted to do a rip cut, like say you had a long piece here. First, you'd want to take the little piece off the front of the table here, uh, which just slides right out. But then you're going to want to orient your wood to come off the table this way. So picture a piece that's about this wide, okay? But I'm going to use a smaller piece uh, just for this demo. What you do in that case there is you're going to use the quad dogs to put in the rail dogs rather. You're going to slide that in into the rail on both sides. And if I get this piece of stock here out of the way, then you put the holes of your MFT. That's where you're going to put. So you just find two of the holes, lower it down until it drops. And I have a little bit of junk here on the side of the table. It's always the case with me. And then you lower it down. Now you would reach underneath the table and you tighten them up. Now remember that you're tightening them up to the guide rail. This thing can still rise up and down, but there's no play once it sits on top of the material. It's going to be into the holes. So the way that you use this is you raise it up, and then you put your stock underneath. There we go. Now I can make a cut. That's great. Uh, that's not square. You can clearly see that. I can move this at any old angle. So how am I going to make this so that I can do squares? Well, I could always draw a line like I did there. Move it over till the guide rail is lined up. But that's kind of silly too. So how about I just take some quads uh, dogs. I put one here, another one on the other side. 
and push it up against it. These holes, this rail is parallel to, the, to a row of dog holes and these are perpendicular to it. So now I'm going to be making a square cut and I'm in the middle of the field. I can slide this around all I want as long as I butt end it to quasi dogs. You know, maybe put some more if you want to have more confidence that you've got the thing squared. And then you can just put your track saw on it and make the cut. So it's great if you had some pencil marks on here, but now I was talking about repeatability. For this to be repeatable, all you need to do is take a small square and block, put it back there. After doing the first demo, I have all my clamps all in the one place now. You know, and very obviously you can see what I'm going to do. We just clamp this thing in place. Nice and tight. I would actually stick some sandpaper on the bottom of a block if I was doing this on a regular basis to make sure it does not move when you bump it. But now, of course, you can make the cut, slide another one in, make the cut, slide another one in, make the cut. You could do that all day long. And if you wanted to cut some narrow pieces underneath, of course, you can make a stop block that just simply reaches underneath, right? So if you had a thinner piece of wood, it could reach underneath the rail. It's below it. It's not going to affect the rail. It could go underneath. Or, in all honesty, if I was doing something like sheet goods, I'd take a scrap of the same sheet good because it'll at least balance the rail a little bit better. But you can tinker with that. This is the idea. So, now here, I'm just showing a little 800 rail. So, between the holes here, I'm actually not going to get that much cross-cut capacity. Certainly not as much as I would get by just simply using the table. But the point is... But you can clearly see that if you were to take your 1400 rails that you got with your TS-75 and you got two of them to line them together, but now you have a 3000 rail, so one of them doesn't do anything, you could use that on your table. And now you can go from one end to the other, and I've already measured this to be 40 inches. So now you have a crosscut capacity of 40 inches that you can put across here. So that's nice that you could easily do that. You take a sheet good, slide it on here. You could easily set up the rail to be out further depending on the size of your table. You're going to have a crosscut capacity of, well, in my case, it would be really close to, actually, it would be very close to 30 inches with my fence on in the back. And if I needed to take the fence off, if my table wasn't butt up against the wall, of course, as easy it is as it is for me to take that fence off and realign it, I could take it off and have almost infinite capacity off the back. I'm assuming the size of your garage is infinite. So... There you go. Some different uses of the Quas Dogs and the Rail Dogs. The combination of the two is fantastic. I would actually recommend if you were to get the Quas Dogs, get four. Uh, I find that I need at least three in so many situations, so do that. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, complaining to yourself a little bit. And that's it. I'm Paul Marcel. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, maybe picked up a tip or two that will be useful in your shop. Thank you.